Hello, YouTubers. It's Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode of stuff, diecast things, and items to uh, share with you. So, got a few things per usual, and as usual, we're going to take a look at those things. I was going to wait. Today is Thursday. This video won't come out till Saturday evening, as it usually does. Um, today is Thursday. I was going to wait uh, for a couple of items that I'm expecting in the mail. Um, there's a couple of things I might get tomorrow, um, and then there's another thing I'm going to get early next week, so obviously I can't wait for that one, but I was going to wait for two boxes, I think, that are actually coming tomorrow, but eh, I figured I got enough stuff to show you, so I'm just going to go ahead and film this now, and then I got a busy weekend ahead of work, so might as well just get it done. It's Thursday night, let's get it done, and I don't have to worry about it. Anyway, not like you guys really need to know that, but... I did get some things in the mail. I got one package in the mail today. Um, not today, but this week. And that was from our good buddy, who has been absent from YouTube for quite some time, Lamar Fashion, who coined the term, hashtag free the peace. Anyway, he is selling his, uh, basically his entire diecast collection. That's actually really sad. Um, maybe he'll get into it again. I don't know. But he is selling the collection. Um, he is doing it through Instagram. So if any of you are interested in some stuff, and he has some really nice items, okay? He's got some really nice stuff. He's got a lot of really nice Kyosho stuff I wish I could afford, but I'm just not in a position to be making a lot of purchases. Anyway, I did buy from him a couple of Ultra Reds, um, that, a couple that I was actually missing from my collection. One being this right here, this Auto World from the Deluxe series. Uh, from Deluxe Release 1, this Ultra Red. This is one of the two I was missing from that series. The other one that I'm missing from it is actually going to be on its way from a good buddy, Paul Roselle. So I should get that next week. And then when I get that, uh, so I'm not going to open this in the second half because when I get that other missing Ultra Red, I will do a video on the first Deluxe series. Is what I've been doing with all my Auto World is as soon as I complete the series, all the Ultra Reds, all the regulars, I go ahead and do a standalone video for that series. And I will definitely do that hopefully next week. So there's that. I also got this Ultra Red. Mustang, um, which this is actually a pretty tough get. It is the one with the white, as you can see it, behind the taillights there. And I'll show it close up in the second segment. Um, the reason why this one's tough to get is because it's in premium release three. And you've probably heard me mention this before, but anything release three from Auto World, okay, just isn't that easy to find. It just isn't. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. And you know what? And I should find out, by the way. Um, another thing that is in the works, I should mention, you know, hopefully I'll be able to pull this off, but I am going to go visit uh, the Auto World warehouse and hang out there for a little bit and hopefully chat with the dudes, tour the office and stuff like that. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I just got to find out when I'm going to be able to do it. It's about a five hour drive from my house, so you gotta make a day of it. I mean, that's 10 hours round trip, so pretty major, but Crazy Todd Diecast is going to come with me, hopefully, and hopefully I'll be able to film some stuff from inside the warehouse. Uh, so that's hopefully coming up sometime soon, um, if I'm able to pull it off, get the time to go get away and do it. So look forward to that, if that actually comes to fruition. Um, speaking of traveling, I did have to go out of town for work this week, kind of cool because I picked up this and speaking of series three auto world this is licensed premium series three auto world I already have it but you cannot pass up licensed premium three cars if you see them somewhere this was at a local hobby shop there where I was and it was uh, $7.99 and there's one of these right now listed on eBay and they want 30 bucks for it Okay. I'm not saying you're going to get rich on finding these cars because they're hard to find, but all I'm saying is, is that do not leave them behind. I don't know if I'm going to hoard this and keep this. If I do not keep it, it's going to end up going to Martin, uh, my buddy, uh, the Hot Wheels Hunter on YouTube. Please check him out, by the way, if you have not subscribed to him. He shows some awesome die casts. He's really into auto world like me, so of course we get along. And... Um, if this ends up getting traded to anybody, it's going to be him and nobody else. But I have a real hard time, really hard time parting 
uh, with anything like this. So even though I already have it, I got one loose, but still, it's, it's tough for me to physically detach myself from that. All right, so next up, I did find a couple of things in store, but just Matchbox. Um, well, actually, I did find some other things. I found the 50th favorite set at Target, um, and I did pick up uh, a couple extra Datsun 510s uh, just because I knew somebody's going to want them, and um, otherwise I'm just going to hang on to them for a little bit or whatever. So I did grab those from a Target, but it was late to the party for everything else there. Um, except for, I did find one Matchbox car that I wanted, this Porsche. Love the new card art, by the way. Looks fantastic. Uh, so this is the Porsche Cayman. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open that in the second segment. And then I found some, this is also, I believe, from that same case, BMW M5. Now, these I actually got at a Big Lots. So they got the sticker on there, $1. Everything at Big Lots is stickered. So I got that. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, this Ford Fairlane wagon I picked up. I don't think I've got this already. And now that I'm looking at it, I think I might have it, but I don't, I don't think I do. I don't think I got it. I don't think I've seen this case at all hit anywhere. So I got that one. I got the uh, 2015 BMW M3 goofy looking car. And then I got the, uh, this one's cool. This 2000 Chevy Suburban. Um, that is a neat one. I love Mainline Matchbox, guys. I really, really, really like what they're doing with Mainline Matchbox. I actually get a lot more excited right now about new Matchbox stuff than I do Hot Wheels, to be honest with you. I don't know. I like realistic-looking vehicles without wacky graphics, and Matchbox really does that does that job pretty well. It's just that their their distribution is a little bit tough to, to find. Um which it is what it is. All right, so next up, I got two items. This actually, these are just two items I purchased out of my buddy's, uh, my late friend Chuck's collection. Um, they're only like two like green light cars that he really had, and um, I decided to keep them. So I bought them from the collection. And one of them was this uh, 1968 Chevy C10 Cheyenne with the camper. I didn't have one of these with the, uh, the camper top. Um, so I decided any green light collection, if you're going to collect green light, has to have at least one of these in it. And then, and I don't know if I talked about this already, but I kind of got that wacky idea of how I'm going to collect green light basically is besides collecting all of the Trans Ams, because I'm not going to not pick up a Trans Am or a van. Um, I kind of want an example of every tooling that green lights come out with. Call me crazy, but that's kind of how my style for collecting green light right now, I think is going to be that way. Um, and I was looking and I made like a spreadsheet of all of them. And it turns out I do actually have a lot of them already, but there's a lot I need. And one of them was this, uh, this 2011 Ford Mustang. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, do I already have this car? I don't think I have the 2011. They do a lot of different Mustang castings and see now I, I have to look i'm gonna do it on camera i apologize about that do i have it already i may not open this one god it looks so much different though sorry about this guys 2011 ford mustang yeah this is the 2012 ford shelby gt you know what i'm gonna keep it anyway i'm gonna open it anyway on camera but i did already have it but that's one thing about Greenlight, man, is they, they really do a good job of having different toolings and or same tooling and then making it look kind of really different with wheels, tires, little accents and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. I am going to keep it. We're going to keep it. All right. And then my buddy, uh, Crazy Todd, who I mentioned a million times on this channel, um, really good local friend of mine. He has a box of stuff, naturally, of things that he's been holding for me for a long time. Now, Crazy Todd, if you don't know who he is, Crazy Todd's Diecast on Instagram, give him a follow. Um, he doesn't really show, and he doesn't really show a lot, but he's a great uh, trader. He gets involved in raffles and stuff. Um, he's got an amazing collection of stuff. He's just got so much really cool things that I'm extremely jealous of, actually, to be frank. And... Um, yeah, so anyway, he always ends up, and he kind of forgets what he buys in this, but he's always looking out for me, too. So the cool thing is he always ends up with doubles, and he always ends up with stuff that he puts in a box for me, one of which that I've been 
really waiting to get my hands on is this uh, Datsun 620 Super. I've actually tried to trade for it unsuccessfully a couple of times. And the big problem with that is I you know, open everything that I get and I don't really have a lot of pieces that are trade worthy, especially to Hot Wheels collectors. I just don't, you know? And, um, but this I was able to get off of him. So thank you so much, Crazy Top. We are gonna go ahead and open it. I know it's an older Super by now. We're almost at the end of 2018, and this was the first one of the year, but we're going to go ahead and open it in the second segment. Um, he had an extra one of these Mio exclusive 2017 Ford GT test mule cars, which is really neat, and I think this was the first release of this tooling. Um, this is another one of the cars that I'm going to pick up a lot of, and definitely not all of them because some of the liveries are pretty ugly, in my opinion, even though they're like heritage liveries, like copy liveries of older cars. They just don't look whatever. Anyway, so also this is another hobby exclusive, this GMC Vandura in just plain Jane white, but it looks great. We're going to go ahead and open up this and take a look at it. Um, and then two cars from the latest Meekum Auctions series. Uh, one being the 1970 Datsun 240Z. Now, this one's got the smaller tires on it, which makes the stance of this car look better. I am going to, yeah, I will grab one of the older ones that I've, you know, tooling is still not great. But we're going to take a look at the comparison between this and the ones with the larger tires and kind of take a look. And I'm not talking about the Baja one. I'm talking about the regular civilian style one. Um, but they did originally have larger tires on it, I believe. We're going to take a look at that, though, and see what, the, see what they look like next to each other. Another one I was excited to get is the 1979 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. This is also from the Meekum Auctions series. It's in black. Sweet-looking bird on the hood. Uh, this sold in Kissimmee, Kissimmee, Kissimmee for $23,000. What are this? This one sold in Seattle for seventeen grand. by the way, the real car. The Meekum Auction Series is kind of cool. I like it. Um, and then the other thing that he had for me that he picked up, I believe, in a Facebook Live sale, which he does a lot of those. I'm glad I don't do a lot of those because I'd probably go broke. Uh, this is the Pontiac Vibe GT, which, if you know what kind of car I drive, I drive a Pontiac Vibe GT. It ain't that special. But mine is a 2009 um, this one is the body style, I think, before. I mean, they look very, it looks very close to my car. Uh, except my car's not black, it's silver. But this is the second version of the Matchbox, this Matchbox casting I have. I don't think there's a lot of variations of this out there. Um, and actually, they tend to actually fetch a little bit of coin on the old eBay. So they're not exactly that easy to get a hold of. Some of them are kind of expensive for whatever reason, but you see a lot of vibes out on the road. Um, and that's because basically they're Toyota Matrixes, in case you didn't know that. Um, but yeah, so I'm guessing they tend to last pretty long. And if you go out and look on the road, you'll probably see a bunch of vibes, especially now that I mentioned it. So, all right. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and flip the camera around. We're going to open up the Matchbox, open up the green light stuff, open up that Super, open up this matchbox as well do i have a no, the only hot wheel i got in this video is going to be a super but that ain't bad right so let's go ahead and flip it around and uh as usual take a look at some stuff opened up all right so let's take a quick close look at some stuff well it ain't gonna be that quick but we're gonna take a close look at some things we've got this mustang this beautiful ultra red just a real quick just to spin around one time 2015 Stang. That is a nice one. It is definitely cool. So this is prior, if you're familiar with this casting, this is prior to Auto World changing up the headlight tampa. Uh, they used to just be silver, like you see here. Um, other than that, the detail on this uh, vehicle is fantastic. So they did change up the headlight uh, to show a lot more detail nowadays. So it's much nicer. I didn't grab out one to show you, but... Um, so here it is anyway this is that series three mustang and she is a beauty thank you very much lamar for checking this one off my list it would have been a tough one to check off all right so next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to take a look at the hot wheels and matchbox real quick and then i'm going to go off on kind of a green light tangent um which is probably going to make this video long but uh 
I don't know. I'm looking at, I opened some of these castings and I can already see some things that are irritating me. Um, so stay tuned for that. We'll see how bad it actually is. All right. Anyway, starting with this though, Hot Wheels makes their dollar cars. They do really do a good job. These are mass produced, obviously, but uh, the bases are typically riveted on correctly. When you don't find one that's riveted on correctly, uh, it might actually be worth more. But anyway, uh, so this Dawson 620 Super, I've been after it, honestly, since it came out. I never got lucky and found one. Um, so I am really glad to add it to the collection. And here it is. Um, just a, a really cool little Dotson truck. I love this little pickup truck casting. Um, I've almost got all of them. I think the only one that I am actually missing is the Kmart, the blue Kmart one. And I think actually I might be also missing a nine or 10 pack or whatever it is exclusive. There might be one of those that I'm missing. I think it's like the tan one. I'm pretty sure I got the brown one and the black one. I think there's a tan one that I don't have. I could be wrong on that. It might be the brown one I don't have. Anyway, there is one that I'm missing. Um, I did, of course, I brought up the regular car just to compare it to. Um, pretty cool super. I definitely like it. Of course, it doesn't have detail on the front or the back because it's a, it's a dollar car, right? And so plastic base, of course, and you got your rubber tires, real rider tires. And just a nice looking one that I was definitely uh, after for a while. Just never got lucky and found one. Um, and luckily Todd had an extra one and he's been actually holding it on to me, holding it, holding on to it for me for quite some time. So I appreciate that, Todd. Thank you very much. And there's still a lot more stuff I have in that box that eventually needs to get, you know, taken care of. Uh, next up, let's take a look at this Pontiac Vibe. This is a cool one, man. This uh, super fast 35 anniversary of, so this is actually came out in 2004. So some time ago. And like I said, actually, this is two generations of Vibe, I think, behind mine. Mine is a 2009, actually. And they changed the body style a couple of times. And here it is. All right, so this is nice, actually. It's quite nice. The wheels almost actually look prototypical. They're not, but they almost look that way. Nice detail on the front. Nice headlight detail. Nice taillight detail. That's a really nice car. I mean, this one wasn't probably a dollar. I don't know how much these things cost because it's like an anniversary edition. Uh, so I, don't, I really don't know how much they were. Um, but I do have one more example of this uh, casting to show you. I showed it in a previous video when I originally got it. And here is it right here. This is sweet. So this is actually color of my car as well. Really nice detail on the front. Really nice detail on the rear. And just a really cool little Pontiac Vibe GT. Yeah, buddy. So, really neat little Matchbox car. I'm excited to have now two, two versions of it. That is just really cool to me. It's always cool to get anything close to your actual daily driver. Uh, in die cast form, even if it's not that fancy of a car. All right, so next up, let's take a look at all these other Matchbox real quick. Um, this is a 2015 BMW i3. This is the intermediary um, car design before they settled on the new, new one. Um, 65th anniversary one. Matchbox is just kind of weird like that, but really cool. We should be getting some opening features Matchbox sometime soon, too, which is going to be quite interesting. Uh, this is just, you know, your typical Matchbox that's got headlight and taillight detail, no graphics. Uh, just kind of looks like a good example of the actual car. This car, though, it's a BMW. I'm not a huge BMW fan, but and even if you like BMWs, this thing just really ain't that exciting. But it's okay, whatever. It's a, it's a good representation of the car, and I pick up almost every single uh, licensed max, Matchbox vehicle. Here's another one on the intermediary card, a uh, 2000 Chevy Suburban. Sheriff livery, uh, what county is that? Is it Boone County? Boone County Sheriff. Pretty cool. And uh, it's nice and gold. 
Anyway, it's a nice looking Matchbox. Matchbox, like I said, does a good job. It's also got a trailer hitch on it, which is also pretty cool because you could probably tow behind the, uh, the speed trap and anything else that they've made. Um, they used to put trailer hitches on a lot of their cars, like stuff that didn't even make sense back in the day. Like you'd have, I don't know, I don't have a good example, but they put trailer hitches on almost everything. Uh, so that's cool. Um, here's another one from, I believe, that same case code, the 64 Ford Fairlane wagon. This is definitely a cool little wagon. Glad to have it. Looks really, really nice. It's got a really nice little stance on it. Um, this one doesn't have headlights or taillight details because it's got the stripes on the side. So that is the sacrifice, of course, with a dollar model car, is you cannot put tampos everywhere. You just can't because then the cost of the car will be up too high. Um, this one is really neat. I was kind of just checking out the back just in case there was something hidden in the back of this thing. There is not, um, but still a really, really cool car. It'd be easy to detail out, customize, and just make it look fantastic. So that is really cool. And then we got two from the latest case. Uh, one, I think it's the latest case anyway. One being this BMW M5 in a Matchbox Fire Department livery. looks good again you are going to sacrifice uh, headlights and taillights for the rest of the graphic but i think it i mean it's very w well done and it looks looks really good i mean it's a dollar car again these matchbox are dollar cars i like these wheels for a dollar car they even have the edge of them kind of looks like they have tread so from the side it kind of looks like there is tread on the tire even though there isn't just great job. Great job, guys. All right, so there's that one. And the last one we got is the Porsche Cayman. Very cool casting. Uh, this one looks like the back wheel. There might be something up for that back axle. Let's take a look. And I don't know. It does look a little off, doesn't it? And maybe it's not. I don't know. Just looks like it's sitting back a little further than it's supposed to be. Uh, so this one is really nice, pearl white. Um, headlights where you want them to be, taillights where you want them to be, of course. License plate, very nicely detailed. The wheels being gold actually looks pretty good on this. Um, I like it. I think they did a great job with this casting. I enjoy this casting. I've got quite a few variations of it. All right, so next up, we're going to get into green light. That's going to be the remainder of the video. So if you don't like looking at green light stuff, uh, turn the video off. If you do like looking at green light stuff, keep it on. Actually, you know what? This is going to be for anybody because I'm going to rip into green light a little bit here, probably, most likely. And uh, some of it's good, some of it's bad. So I guess if you like it, there's going to be some of this video you're not going to like. And if you don't like it, there's going to be some of this video you're not going to like, too. Let's start with something that's probably going to be good. Here is this Chevy C10 Cheyenne. Yes, it looks like this hood should open. It does not. They never tooled it with an opening hood, but it originally was supposed to have an opening hood. And I know that thanks to Mac Reagan. Follow him on Instagram and Facebook, who used to actually work for Greenlight. Um, used to work for Johnny Lightning. I think he currently works for round two. I'm not sure. Um, it might be like he was the social media manager, I think, for around two. I'm not sure, but anyway, I'm not sure if he's working for anybody right now. But this is really nice. The Chevy C10, as you can see, uh, bow ties a little bit off center there, but you really can't be that nit nitpicky with that small printing. Well, maybe you can, but I'm not gonna be because we got bigger problems here, not with this casting. Uh, but in general, this looks really great, and it's glad I'm glad to have one of these in the collection. The camper top, of course, is plastic. The rest of the truck is uh, very, very metal, and it looks pretty good. Decent roller, too. Um, so this can't be that old. It doesn't have a green rivet, but I'm not sure if all the old ones did or not. All right, so next, let's take a look at this Mustang GT. Now, this one also, this is from Series 10. Uh, so it's from about 2015, so it's not like new-new, 
a little bit older, GL Muscle Series. Yeah, it doesn't roll. I did not notice that beforehand. And, yeah, I don't know, something's up at the front of the car, too. I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to look like that. Tail lights in the back are an insert, which is awesome. Um, hood opens. It's cool. You get a little bit of detail in there. What is up with the front of the car? I didn't even notice that in the packaging, but I think it's just supposed to be like that pillar is supposed to be black right there. Or that whole thing's supposed to be black, but I'm really not sure. Other than that, if you look really close at the headlights, which I'm not going to be able to uh, give you that really that nice view with my camera uh but they are very very detailed like the little orange indicators are inside of there and stuff so that is kind of neat it's just this overspray with the black makes the front end look kind of not very good um and of course it doesn't roll which you know roll or not it's not, well maybe just a, oh here we go here's the problem why it doesn't roll Premium die cast, whether or not it rolls really well, is very secondary to me. Um, what is important, though, is stance of the vehicle and that the vehicle looks like it's sitting at the correct ride height. Um, so just comparing, so these two are the same tooling. This Golf one is actually newer, and it does look a lot better in spite of the hood not shutting completely full and I think they also did something with the front of this tooling that looks a little bit different um, the headlights are definitely not as detailed and this one's actually really cloudy um, but I believe these are the same tooling we can confirm that that's one nice thing about green light if you look at the base this is G tooling GLL 48 and this one's also GLL 48 but they do have slightly different front ends and like I said green light will do that definitely from time to time uh, they'll have like family tooling. It's basically all the same, but then they have like the front end will be a little bit different. Let's take a look at the rear end here. That's pretty much the same. Looks all right. When you compare it though to the Auto World, and I know the Auto World isn't exactly the same car. I mean, aside from the headlights not being very detailed on this one, which they did change that. That Mustang logo looks great in there. I guess you really can't compare these two. They are different cars. But quality control wise, you know I'm gonna side with my my auto world. Alright, so there's the Mustang. Just wanted to take a quick look at the Mustang. Uh, next up, let's take a look at the 2017 Ford GT test mule. Let me open that up. I don't know what this is limited to. Oh, it does say right in the front. So this is limited to 2760 pieces, which is a pretty low production run for Greenlight. This actually looks quite great. I don't have any issues, I don't think, with this one. Just taking a peek at it. Very detailed. Look at those little silver dots right there. Uh, the taillights look like they're in good. This is just a, it's a really neat casting. I'm sure it was a tough one to pull off. They did a lot of separate little pieces like this. The flying buttress is what you call this, right? This is actually a plastic piece that's added on. So, of course, every time they use this casting, it's a paint match that. Um, plastic to metal, which I'm sure the process has got to be slightly different as far as the paint goes. Um... This is number 2363, towards the end of the line there. And this one, I'm going to say, actually is quite good. I didn't see any issues with this one in the package, so it's quite good. What do we pick up here? Some junk, some paint from another car. Um, so this is my favorite one of these, by the way. My favorite release of this is this guy here. This is a newer one. I think that one looks awesome. So this is a casting I really, really like from Greenlight, okay? Greenlight does some stuff really, really well. This casting is very, very cool. Even though I did get a problem one once, I got this black bandit, which you'll notice is missing the front wheels. No, it did not come with the front wheels missing. What it came with was the back wheel, back axle on the front, which if you look at these tires, obviously not gonna work. Um, 
came with the back axle on the front and the front axle on the back. So somehow they got switched in production and that just did not work. These wheels were sticking out way far. These wheels were in really, really far and I tried to switch them. Um, but unfortunately the front axle or what was supposed to be the front axle, the wheels were actually, one of the sides was broken through the rim. The axle was broken through. So that uh, front axle was actually not salvageable at all from this Black Bandit release. And if you've seen Travis uh, Heavy Metal 164's video on this Black Bandit release, man, there were a lot of quality issues with that particular release that that was from. So I guess if you're going to buy those, you really got to look for them. That's the one unfortunate thing about Greenlight is I really wish I could see everyone before actually grabbing it because, man, I, lately, just lately, really, there have been an extreme amount of quality issues. Now, I don't want to say this, but I almost want to, like, lump them in with the amount of problems that M2 seems to have to me. This one came with some weird hair on it on the inside of the packaging. That's a little weird. Uh, this one, in general, this GMC Vandura, looks pretty good. I'd say it's pretty good. Um, the the plastic bits that make up these little uh, uh, wheel arches are not perfect. They look like they're cut out, or the molding's not perfect. So it's kind of, it's like rough, it's got a rough edge to it. Not a huge deal. There's a little bit of like, I don't know, paint missing up front. White is a tough color to really get right. Um, uh, it looks okay. Compare it real quick. Here is the uh, 18 version of the van. This one's done very, very awesome. Um, so differences between the two. Okay, so they both have the visor in the front. Uh, this one's got the lights added to the top, which is cool. Nothing here. <clears throat> and then they both have the back spoiler deal, back bumper. They both have the wheel arches. This one's got the brush guard, though, in the front, and this one does not. Uh, pretty cool. And then comparing it then again to this one here, this one basically has all the same accessories as the other one and it's got a majestic wolf on the on the back which is awesome gotta love wolf van and then this one here is the like plain jane model with the wheel arches are more stock and it doesn't have uh, the little visor thing up there it doesn't have the spoiler it doesn't have any other little accessory this van's actually done very, very nicely. There's no issues with it whatsoever, so that is great. So there's a quick look at some Vanders. I don't know if that's all the versions, those three and this one. There might be one more that I'm missing yet that's already out. Um, I know there's going to be more coming. That is the thing. With Greenlight releases and new tooling, they really do hammer it home for a while. They, they put out a ton of versions of it. All right, so now this one here, Datsun 240Z. I was super pumped when I found out that they were coming out with a Datsun 240Z. Yeah, all you JDM guys probably were a fan of the whole Tokyo Torque series. This car was the one that I was very, very excited for. Saw pictures of it, looked really weird. Thought, okay, it just looks really weird. When it comes out, it's going to be better. And I still don't know. Does the hood open on this one? Somebody tell me if the hood opens. I don't think I've ever been able to open it. If it does, it should open backwards. I don't think it does. I don't think it's open. I don't think it opens, which doesn't really matter. Okay, this looks somewhat okay. Stance is definitely not perfectly level. Uh, the other thing is, is the the proportions of this car just don't look great. And I've been over that subject before. Why do I keep buying them? I don't know. I love the 240Z. I should stop, though. I should stop picking them up. And I haven't picked up every one, to be honest. I have not. But this does look a lot better, I think, than, for example, this one with the larger tires. Look how huge those rims look on this car. It just looks awful. I don't know how this passes as being good for Greenlight. Like, when they got the production samples of this car... 
they should have just said forget about it. We're not going to put the 240 out. And I think the 240 was delayed actually initially um, for whatever reason, and they weren't showing up in cases. Here's another example of it. This one doesn't look as bad as that one, but still the wheels and tires are way too big for the car, in my opinion. You know, maybe you guys think this looks proportionately perfect. Yeah. No. All right. But they gave it some smaller wheels. Oh, here's another version of it. Here's the Brie version of it. Blech. I mean, everything looks okay except for the stance. It is cool that they do the different lights. So this has got the lens covers on it. Um, these do not. That's kind of a neat thing. Neat thing about the tooling. They obviously made it so they could do a bunch of different versions, a Baja version and all that with it. Ooh, I just realized this one's like double spun. See that? It's been attacked twice by the whatever spins down the rivet. Boom, boom. That's interesting. Never really seen that before. Uh, this is an error. All right, so there's that. And then but this one, they gave it smaller tires, smaller wheels um, to make the, to try to correct the stance. And I got to say, I mean, it did, it did it okay, I guess. It did improve the look of it a little bit but it still does not look very good and not as good as the M2 at all. Um, so that's my opinion on that tooling, but that's obvious that I was gonna come to that conclusion if you watched my other videos where I talked about that tooling. Now, the major disappointment. I'm guessing this is gonna have an issue. I just looked at it kind of, and you can almost see it through the side here, but this is what it's gonna have. We should coin this term. Um, Heavy Metal 164, Travis, you call it the Gangster Lean. Um, gangster Lean, I think, almost sounds too positive for these base spinning issues where the car does not sit level. So I don't know what to call it. We should make up a term for it, though. So somebody, somebody give me a good thing to call it um, in the comments down below. What's a good term for this problem? Can you tell how bad that is on camera? Maybe you can't. But look at the look at the stance to that side. Look at the stance to that side. Why? Why can't you get the base on the car correctly? You know? I don't want to be like, oh, we pay six dollars for these cars or whatever, five dollars for these cars, depending on where you get them from, a hobby dealer or whatever. And depending on what kind of deals they give you. But uh, I'm trying to get the hood open on this thing. I'm not even going to mess with it. But um, why, 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 why are you having stance issues now? What is the problem? Auto World has suffered from this slightly too. They're not completely exempt from it. They definitely are not. There have been a few cars that I've seen with definite quality issues uh, resulting from the base not being spun on correctly or crooked or whatever. But what is going on, guys? Why are you doing this? This I think this is the second video in a row, actually, that I've complained about this. I don't know if it was last one or not. But I would be like, okay, not a big deal, right? Whatever. It's just one car. Mm -hmm. This one's even worse. These are both recent releases of this same casting that has this exact same problem. This is the side that you see it from in the packaging. That's the side that it doesn't, and it does sit kind of crooked in the package, but I don't think the package is causing it to lean like that. So what do you want to coin that term? What's that term? It's not a gangster lean. I'm not going to go with that. That sounds, like I said, too positive. Um, so I'm just irritated with this. I mean, you really are, especially when now, like, green light is not available. Here's one with a proper stance, by the way, just to show you how it should look. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, this one's even got a little bit of a lean to it. In the same direction, too. But anyway, the, the, the nightmare about this is that, I mean, I'm in a position right now, basically, where any green light I get is not going to be from a retail location. It's going to be from a hobby dealer. Um, Todd will get stuff for me when he orders. He'll just double up his order if he knows that I want to want it. Um, it's going to be from a hobby dealer or whatever. So I can't really look at the stuff 
with a fine tooth comb before you get it. So it's kind of like you get the car and that's what you deal with. You cannot blame the hobby dealers for it because they can't sit and look at every car and examine it before they, they it's not their job uh, to do quality control. You wouldn't expect Walmart to do quality control on the die cast it sells, you know, just make sure the package is there and whatever. I mean, you can't expect Toys R Us to ever have done that. You can't expect any seller of this stuff to just eat the cost on anything, you know, that's default from factory bad. Um, another thing that I just noticed too on these tires, the uh, printing on the wheels is totally off on that one tire. That's getting a little nitpicky maybe, but you should be able to expect the car to have the correct stance or at minimum, maybe not the correct stance, but at minimum for it to be level, like level. I don't know what is causing this, but you guys need to figure it out and fix it. Just fix it. It's so disappointing to to get the car that I wanted and now be like, I mean, I won't even get in a different one to replace it because chances are it's going to have the same issue. I mean, that's two. That's the last two Trans Ams in a row that I purchased that have this major leaning issue. And I don't know why it's happening. And it seems to be happening with quite a few green light. Um, it has happened, like I said, with a couple of Auto World, not exempt from the issue. A couple of Johnny Lightnings, so a couple of Round 2 castings have had the problem. Um, you know, whatever. A few castings have had the issue. Um, so out of these that we looked at today with green light, there wasn't really a lot of quality issues. The only other kind of one was, you know, this having the weird choppy look to the, the side. But that's, you know, whatever. That is not that bad. Um, this base... I think would be a tough one to get on incorrectly because of the way that it sits. Um, so if you push it on all the way, it's there. Uh, but yeah, like I said, what is the deal with this? What is the deal with this leaning casting? Um, and actually, you know, I think I have one more Trans Am that's exactly like this. And I think it's from the most recent, like, Hollywood re-release of the Smoking the Bandit car that also has a lean like this. I mean, you should know by now. I mean, especially if you released that car came out, what, a couple of years or a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. So you've gone through production cycles here on this vehicle, should have realized that there is an issue and should have been able to fix it, I would think. This can't be that major of an issue that you cannot fix um, and suffer a huge loss in profits. So I don't know. That's my two cents, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if you've had similar issues, but this to me is just kind of unacceptable. It just is. I mean, yeah, I can display the car still. I can display it, you know, whichever way I guess I think looks better. This one looks awful from either direction. It looks way too low on that side. It looks way too high on that side. This one, I guess, is passable on that side. <sighs> but whatever. So that's going to be it, guys. All right. So sorry to end on that note. Positively, though, real quick, really cool to get some cool Pontiac vibes in the collection. That one I've had. That one is really cool. Look at that. Those are awesome. All right. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Anyway, green light. If you watch this, you don't. I know you don't. But if you did, take note of this or look at your product and, and fix it because... You've had enough time on this. You've definitely had enough time on that one to fix it. You should definitely, you should definitely get that done. All right, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching another weekly video. Please tune in to the next one. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all that fantastic things. And uh, yeah, see you later. Peace.